The film begins in an escape room. A man is seen frantically trying to figure out the answer to an escape riddle before something bad happens. He panics as he soon realizes that the room is closing in on him, squeezing and knocking down the furnitures in the room as it gets closer and closer. He however soon finds a note which says, "Follow the light to greener pastures." He soon realizes what it meant and headed for a green book at the top of a shelf. And the walls of the room continue to be getting closer and closer every second. He managed to get the book, but accidentally falls down from the ladder. The clue on the book tells him to find time's great mystery. He figures that the clue should be on a clock, but he doesn't seem to see any clocks around. He however later soon realizes the answer to the code which was 4862. He hurriedly tries to put in the code as the walls continue to be closing in, knocking down lights and pushing the shelves down. He puts in all the codes correctly but the walls doesn't stop closing in and continue squeezing furniture's closer and closer towards him as he screams for help until finally it squashes him flash back to 3 days earlier in chicago illinois we are introduced to three distinct people first we see zoe a brilliant socially awkward student studying at chicago university then jason a stockbroker working in a business firm and finally ben the guy we saw earlier being squashed who works in a grocery store later that day each of them gets a black box delivered to them with a note which says for always thinking outside the box to open new doors and a chance to escape the box appears to be a weird looking puzzle box which they find the structure very confusing at first but they all however manage to figure out how to unlock it the box brings out a note which says This serves as an entry voucher for minus escape rooms. Be the first to escape our most immersive room yet and win $10,000 RSVP at minusescaperooms.com. So the next day, they all make their way to minus building and we are introduced to three more contestants: Amanda, Mike and a nerdy kid named Danny. Danny appears to be an escape room geek, and they all have chats about their experience with escape rooms and bond at this point, while they wait for the games master to come in and give them the story and take them to the escape room. Ben starts to get impatient and tired of waiting and decides to go outside, but the doorknob breaks off as he tries to open the door, revealing a combination lock. Nerdy kid soon realizes this and tells the others that this could be the escape room and that the game had begun already. So they all began to look for clues. Soon later, Mike finds a book with a title which says Fahrenheit 451. Zoe concludes that that must be the combination passcode. But as she puts in the combination, the ceiling began to get hotter and hotter. Amanda gets scared at this and tells Zoe to turn it off, but it appears it can't be turned off. Ben suggests they should just break the lock off, so he gets a fire extinguisher, but as he forcefully pulled it off, it became even worse and the walls of the room began to increase in temperature causing them to get scared even more. Although Danny assures them that he had seen things like this before and that it is all part of the game, they all still think that it's not fun at all. Zoe finds a key in the extinguisher and they use it to open a locked window where they find a telephone which starts ringing immediately. Jason picks it up and the recording tells them that in order to get the most of their game they should follow all posted rules. But as he slams the phone down, the room began to get hotter than ever before and they all began to panic as the room gets sealed up. Amanda gets freaked out more than the rest of them due to her traumatic experience with fires, but Zoe tries to calm her down, giving her a glass of water from a dispenser. She notices the burn scars on Amanda's neck though. They all continue to figure out how to get out, but it appears the more they use force, The hotter the room gets, Zoe finds a sign on the wall which says, "Use the coasters at all times." So she heads towards the table, and as she presses the coaster down, an exit is revealed. They all soon realize the twist. They had to hold all six coasters down in order for the passage to be opened. But once the release theer hands, the door closes. The room continues to get even hotter. So Jason decides to explore the path that the vent leads to. Zoe soon gets an idea and decides to use water from the dispenser to hold the coasters down. So they all quickly try to do the same. Although as Amanda goes through the vent, we find out that she's claustrophobic and she starts having flashbacks of her trauma. So Zoe goes after her to help. But soon, the water runs out. But luckily, Ben had his flask with him and he uses it to fill the last glass. And last two manage to make their way out of the room just before a blazing object from the ceiling destroys the whole room with fire. They make their way to next escape room, which happens to be a locked cabin. Although they're all freaked out on what just happened, Jason urges them to continue because of the 10 grands. He finds the key to the first lock, and Ben figures the passcode to the second lock. As they open the cabin doors, they come out in a very cold blizzard, and the door of the cabin gets shut behind them. Danny decides to explore around, but gets stopped by some invisible wall, and as he falls to the ground, 
It turns out that they're actually all standing on ice and it began to crack. Although Danny tells them that the ice is not real and is probably just some sound effect, and tells them that there are cameras in place to make sure nothing bad happens to them. But as he touches the invisible wall, vents began to open, blowing out cold freezing air, and they all urge Danny to get away from there. The windows from the cabin also gets shut too. Danny tells them that they should probably start looking for clues. Jay finds a door around the walls, but it appears to be locked. While Amanda, Zoe and Danny find a chest with a clue which says True North is a lie. They also find a jacket inside, but it's just one. Amanda understand that the people that are doing this to them wants them to fight over limited resources, but she tells them that it's not going to work and that they'll share it, so she gives the jacket to Zoe to go first. Soon later, Mike finds a fishing rod nearby, which they could use to check out the giant fishing hole they just found. And Zoe soon notices that there is a compass inside the jacket she's wearing, and follows its direction which led to a stuffed polar bear. She finds a magnet inside the polar bear's mouth. She tells them about it and they attach it to the fishing rod and use it to bring out a frozen key from the bottom, which appears to be the key to the door Jason found earlier. They try to break the ice off but it's too solid. They ask Ben for his lighter, and Ben decides to be a jerk and throws it on the ice. Danny tells them that'll he'll go get it. But as he picks the lighter up, the ice breaks, and he falls inside the freezing water, and gets carried away by the current inside. Only Ben saw this happened, and the other soon realizes seconds later. They all began to try and look for him inside, but the current continues to thrust him over to different places, and they can't seem to locate where he is, until finally, we see Danny drowning under the ice. They are all dumbfounded on what just happened, and began to suspect Ben having something to do with it since he was the only one who saw him drown. Danny once mentioned something about a games master, so they began to think it might be Ben. But Ben defends himself telling them that they're all just as shady and suspicious as he is, mentioning all their flaws. Jason tells them to stop, as the only thing that matters is getting out of there now. So they all put their hands on the ice to melt it and get the key out. Hours later, they manage to get the key out, but we also see Jason having flashbacks about being in a blizzard just like this before, he began to lose control and grab the key immediately it had melted, while the others followed behind him. The key opens a door behind them, and as they all run towards the door, the ice began to break, but they all managed to make it inside the next escape room. The next room they go inside appears to be a night bar. Only that it appears to be hanging upside down, while they're walking on the ceiling. Soon later a telephone starts ringing, but since they're upside down, the telephone is placed on a table above them. The phone wire however dropped down and Mike caught it, but it releases a screeching noise when he answered it. An annoying elevator music began to play. They notice that the door doesn't seem to have a handle, so they conclude that they must be looking for a doorknob. Mike accidentally steps on something, which caused the ground below him to fall apart, but Ben managed to pull him back before he could make the next step. So they all get off from the ground and held onto something. Amanda however managed to make her way up, in order to get more clues, she finds a microwave which required to input a password. After trying 1234 and 1111 with no luck, Zoe notice a bookshelf puzzle and make her way towards the other side with Mike's help to solve it. She soon solves the puzzle and they get a code to the lock but it turns out to be a wrong code, and the ground continues to disintegrate even more, so Mike and Ben climb up to the shelf where Zoe is, but the shelf couldn't hold all three off them, and began to fall over, so Zoe tried to get off the shelf, but accidentally falls over to the ground and goes unconscious. Here we see Zoe having a flashback of her traumatic experience during a plane crash with her mom, where her mom was hanging upside down. Jason managed to wake her up soon though. And they climb up. Zoe tells Amanda that the room is upside down so maybe the code might be too. Amanda inputs the code and it works. She finds an eighth ball inside which is the doorknob they're looking for. She tries to make her way to the other side, jumping over to the pool table and trying not to look down at the scary bottom. But the ball falls off her pocket, and although they tell her to just leave it, she jumps down anyways and manages to catch it before it rolls over. The ground began to fall apart again, and Amanda throws the ball to Jason, and grabs onto the telephone wire, just before the floor falls apart. Now, with Amanda hanging on barely, the others try to reach onto her with a pool stick, but the wire snaps, causing her to fall. Zoe, Mike, Ben and Jay are now left dumbfounded and petrified on what just happened. But they all have to move forward. The next room they go inside appears to be a medical room which each of them was admitted to when they faced their trauma. They find their medical records when they were in the hospital after their post-trauma. Zoe tells them about her plane crash with her mom, and was the only survivor in the crash. Jason tells them his trauma when he got stuck in the middle of the ocean with his friend and had hypothermia, 
and his friend tried to kill him, but he survived. Ben tells them how he got into an accident with six of his friends and was the only survivor. Mike tells them about an occupational hazard that ended all his team members' lives. It turns out that the people that had been doing this to them had known everything about them, every detail about their trauma, and wanted to use that against them. The escape rooms were built based on their traumatic experience, because they were all sole survivors of vicious incidents. So the people that did this to them wanted to conduct an experiment based on statical probability to see who will be the luckiest among the lucky. A new game begins, but Zoe tells them that she's not to going to continue playing the game, because that's what they want them to do, but they tell her that they don't have any choice. While the guys continue to figure out clues, Zoe breaks all cameras in the room because they're watching them. Jay finds a carbon monoxide poison and figures that they're going to poison them. And Mike tells Zoe that they could really use her help or else they'll all die, but Zoe doesn't stop smashing the cameras. The others find an EKG machine which is their next clue. It required them to use someone with a very high heart rate so Jason uses a machine to shock Mike but it doesn't seem to be working. And Mike passes out and stop breathing. The five minutes soon runs out and the poisonous gas is released, but Jason figured out a way to make the machine work. And he makes his way out. Ben tells Zoe that they've found a way out but she doesn't stop breaking the walls and she tells him to just go with Jason. So Ben had to leave her behind. And Zoe collapses and goes unconscious due to the carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, just left with Jason and Ben. Ben confronts Jason about how selfish he was telling him that he killed Mike and didn't even care. He also tells him that he also probably killed his friend too on that Kiak. Jason tells him that surviving is a choice and he did what he needed to do to survive confirming that he did actually killed his friend. He tells him that they should just continue looking for clues to get out of there, they find a hatch which appears to be jammed shut but they both manage to open it together. But it appears they put something on the handle which caused them to start hallucinating and now they had to find the antidote. The room continues to whirl all around them and Ben struggles to find the antidote. He soon finds it and as soon as he tells Jason that he found it, Jason knocks him down and tries to get it from him. They both struggle and fight for it, but Ben managed to get it and injects himself with it. His hallucination soon stops and we see Jason dead. Ben makes his way down the hatch and falls into another escape room, the same one we saw in the first scene. Back to Zoe, after the people come to clean up the dead bodies from the room they make fun Zoe because the oxygen mask that was just in front. But Zoe come up behind them and attacks them knocking them out with pole. She takes their gun and heads out. Meanwhile, just on the last minute that Ben was about to be squashed into bits, he saw a path and managed to make his way inside the fireplace. And right before the walls were completely closed in, it stopped and started to go back, allowing Ben to make his way out of there. He comes out of the room into the part of the building where he sees pictures of the eliminated contestants. He finally meets the game master. He congratulates him for making it to the final level and Ben asks him what kind of psychopath he is and though he just like killing people for fun. It turns out that the game was created for rich and influential people who love watching people fight for their lives and they've been doing this every year. The game master tries to kill Ben by strangling him but Ben takes out the glass from his injury and stabs him but he still continue to strangle him. Zoe shows up soon and shoots at him but he managed to escape, and as she looks for him, he comes up behind her and attacks her, grabbing and aiming the gun on her head but luckily Ben knocks him out with a bottle, takes the gun from him and shoots him dead. And the two make their way out of the building. Ben is admitted into a hospital while Zoe goes with the police to the building where it all happened. But inside the building there was no evidence of what Zoe had described to the police, and no matter how much she tried to tell them about everything that had happened earlier, she only sounded crazy because the building was abandoned and there was no proof to back up what she claimed. Six months later, we see Zoe and Ben recovered from their trauma. Ben tells Zoe about his new job and asks her about the giant paper stack she had with her. She opens it and shows Ben the articles which shows how Amanda, Jason, Danny, and Mike's deaths were faked in those articles. But Ben tells her that she need to let it go. But Zoe disagrees and tells Ben that she had found their location and was ready to put them to bars for what they did to them. And although Ben wasn't fully in on the plan at first she managed to convince him, as those people need to answer for what they did. In the final scene, we are introduced to the mastermind behind it all, and it appears they know that Zoe and Ben are coming for them. Thank you so much for watching, please leave a like and let us know your thoughts on the movie in the comments section below.